So here we have a fault code on the engine coolant temperature sensor. We have a diagnostician who have the right skills, the right diagnostic tool, and also have access to the right technical data. So normally, if we would address a fault code like this, with no experience on the selected car, we would take it step by step and we would track the fault, hopefully. Unless the fault is intermittent or it could be a software related issue. If we had access to a TSB on this fault code on the selected car, we would perhaps start somewhere down the list based on the experience of others. So here we need to start our diagnose. If we have no experience of the problem on the selected car, we need to find the technical data so we can measure the resistance in the temperature sensor. If the resistance is within specification, we then proceed to check the wiring. We need to check the power and ground also with load on. If we still haven't re revealed the fault, we can then proceed with the oscilloscope. Perhaps we need to take the car for a test drive or do a wiggle test to reveal any faults on the signal. If the car is one to four years old, we also need to consider if there could be an update for the control unit that could solve the problem. Instead, if we look up the fault code in the DDTSB, we suggest that on the selected car with this fault code, that you check the outside temperature sensor. On this car, it can be located in the outside mirror. So now we can make a diagnose on the outside temperature sensor, and hopefully this is the fault because this is the most common fault on the selected car, and we can charge for the diagnose, the repair of the outside temperature sensor and hopefully have a satisfied customer. Another example that I saw the other day on, on a post was that it was a customer who had Ford S marks where the interior light didn't work. The first step was to check the fuse and of course this fuse was blown, but there was a permanent shortage so now the track began. It can be many things on the same fuse, so of course there can be a long way to track down a fault like this. There can also be a lot of disassembly involved, and in this case, of course, we would check the wire wiring around the interior light. But unfortunately, on this case, the fault was in the back of the car near the tailgate. If you have used DDTSB, we would enter the symptom. This could be the fault code. You could also select a category like wiring loom or electrical system or just electrical system as, as a symptom. This would le leave you to this TSB where we show the exact fault on this car. So now we just, because of others' experience, we suggest that if this fuse blows, the first thing you need to check is the wiring to the tailgate. But it's not just the tricky electrical faults that you'll find TSBs on. We also have a lot of TSPs on mechanical problem, for example, noise vibration. We all know how time consuming it can be to track down a fault that has to do with noise vibration. So we try to cover this with video and sound files to help you find this fault. And of course, the older the car gets, the more of this problem you'll experience. If we receive a lot of questions regarding a specific maintenance procedure, we also provide you with guides where we explain how to do the procedure and how the system works.